What's going on everybody? This is Dylan with Dylan Talks Tone. Today, we're talking about the Enya Carbon Fiber Acoustic Guitar. Yeah, another carbon fiber acoustic. But this one is pretty affordable. As you are aware, I love carbon fiber acoustic guitars. I actually like anything having to do with any kind of alternative materials to wood. I just think it's cool. In the 21st century, in the year 2022, composites and technology is possible. It is possible to make a guitar that sounds really, really good out of synthetic materials. I'm 100% convinced of it. But then the next question is, what about making it more affordable? because my, as you're probably aware, my McPherson Sable back there is about $3,500, which is not expensive for a quality acoustic guitar, but made in the United States, but it is more expensive than a lot of people want to spend, especially on an alternative material. So I, I get that. Uh, that's where this thing comes in. Um, I reached out to the company after seeing Daryl Braun's video actually, uh, and said, Hey, I'd like to play one of these. So they sent me one. It's $899. It's on Amazon. There's a link to it in the description. If you use that link, it does help me out. Just FYI. They did not pay me to do this review. They did not, they gave me the guitar. So that's compensation. So let's just be upfront about that. Um, they did not tell me what to say in the email. It's like, we're going to send you one. And then I got another email and it was like, did you get it? And I said, yes, you'll see a video pretty soon. They said, thank you. That's it. No, and they don't know that I have a Sable to compare it to, right? So uh, just kind of giving you my thoughts. And you're going to probably say, well, you don't like made in China guitars, so therefore you're going to say it sucks. Wrong. This guitar is very, very cool. So let's get into the details from one end to the other, and we're going to chat about it. And then at the end of this video, I'm actually going to compare it. You're going to do a back-to-back -back comparison to the Sable, and I'm going to give you my thoughts in comparison to that guitar because <laughs> it's kind of similar if you catch my drift. So anyway, but standing on its own, let's chat about this one first. 25 and a half inch scale. It weighs actually about the same as the carbon fiber Sable in it about, it's a little heavier and it's about six pounds. I think my Sable is about five and a half. Uh, it has this carbon fiber acoustic neck. Now what I'm gonna tell you about this is in the past when I have worked with carbon fiber acoustic or carbon fiber composite necks, they've not always been super legit. This one's very interesting because it's painted. So I can't tell what is under there, what the makeup of the neck is because it's painted and I don't wanna ruin it. The same thing with the back of the guitar. Um, it is painted, so we can't really tell what's going on there. Now, obviously, the top looks like carbon fiber. Uh, I will tell you it is much thicker uh, than the top on the Sable. This is much thicker. Uh, and the bracing in it is just sheets of carbon fiber stacked up even thicker, where the Sable is Nomex and some pretty space-age technology. So there is a bit of engineering prowess that went into the Sable where this one obviously is a, more of a copy. Uh, the nut is a smaller uh, a smaller width so think more Martin and less Taylor but it's probably a little narrower than a Martin actually. Uh, it comes with elixir strings. It's got kind of normal cheapy kind of made in China tuners on it. It's got tusk nut and saddle on it which is pretty cool. And it's got a rich light fretboard, but the rich light fretboard, I don't know if you can see that, but it's shiny. It's not matte like a normal rich light fretboard. So according to the sales literature anyway, it says it's rich light, even though it doesn't really look like it. Um, it has been alleged to have stainless frets, but I don't think they are. And I can't find that in the actual manufacturer's paperwork. Um, they don't look like stainless frets to me. But uh, they. that being said, they are very good. They do not have any sharp edges. Uh, it plays well. It's a very comfortable guitar to play. You just sit down and play it. Uh, and this, just with a microphone in the room, 
is what it sounds like. Super cool. I mean, it sounds great. Honestly, it sounds great. I've played a bunch of these, uh, you know, kind of cheaper carbon fiber guitars that just sound like toys. Um, honestly, it sounds pretty awesome. Not, not too shabby. Um, I mean, just on its own, not comparing it to anything and the price point that it is, I think it sounds fantastic. And we haven't even got to the cool part. That was just plugged in with the microphone. Now, what we do is we push this little button and hold it down. Then that little green light lights up and now we have effects available to us in the guitar. Not plugged into anything, nothing. We have a tone, we have a volume, we have a microphone, and then we have this fader right here that goes from less chorus to more chorus. And then it goes from less delay to more delay, depending on what side you have it on. And then we have two different types of reverb here as well. Again, mic'd with nothing plugged into anything, just generating it all from the guitar. This is what that sounds like. Okay, so it really changes when we're plugging it in because now we're not using uh, an external mic. We're using the pickup in the guitar. Thing is, there's a couple of different pickups. So what you're about to hear is the internal effects with the guitar playing straight into a Focusrite USB interface. Uh, there are no effects on the computer at all. It's all coming from the guitar. This is all through the pickup now, not through the sound hole. So uh, this is what it sounds like. See, you can hear the reverb and the delay in there, right? So that's cool. But here's the thing. Watch what happens when I tap the top of the guitar and we bring in the microphone. So now, so now there's a microphone uh, in there as well. And so now we can mix it in and it sounds a little more like this. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So cool, right? I mean, this is so cool. It charges with a USB-C that comes in the case, which reminds me, the case is amazing. It's got a hard shell case. It's beautiful. Uh, it's one of those like really high quality plastic case. It's really good. Uh, it comes with a strap, um, comes with a cable. I mean, this is uh, like a guitar cable plus the USB-C cable. It's a pretty complete kit for $8.99. Thoughts on this thing? I think if you wanted to try a carbon fiber guitar and you did not want to spend $3,500 for a McPherson, uh, this might be an interesting candidate. Now, let's get into some of the bads and the uglies. First of all, I'm not a big fan of a company that rips off another company. And you can definitely tell that this guitar is a direct kind of oh, let's just borrow some things from the McPherson. Um, obviously, the pattern on the top is borrowed, as well as the overall design of the guitar. It actually has the cantilever neck technology, although it's not as good, uh, because all the materials are thicker, and it's a little bit sloppier, a lot sloppier. Um, overall quality of the guitar is obviously more at an $800 price point than a $3,000 price point. The finish is nowhere near as good. Um, the carbon fiber, everything is thicker. Um, it doesn't, you can just tell it's cheaper. There isn't the workmanship there. There is definitely not the engineering there. Um, this guitar is definitely a copy of that guitar. And it, you can just tell in the edges, in the finish, in even how the bridge is glued to the guitar as opposed to the way it is on the McPherson. Um, the neck construction is obviously different because it has a truss rod. Now, let's just get into something real quick here. If you do this with a McPherson, you can, you can bend this guitar when you're playing it. My McPherson, I can go probably a couple of weeks without tuning it. This guitar, you have to tune it every time you play it, um, even letting it sit overnight. Uh, it had some strings that were worse than others, and I had to tune it a couple of times before playing it today. The McPherson, that thing is like rock solid stable at all times. Any weather, any condition, any anything. That guitar is rock solid, 100%. You can definitely tell the engineering difference between this and that. Um, overall feel and workmanship, it's a made in China guitar for 900 bucks. There was little smears around the, the dots uh, on the side dots. There, the finish has, has little imperfections in it because it's like sprayed matte metallic over whatever material is underneath it which is allegedly carbon fiber, which it probably is, but you just kind of can't really tell, which on the McPherson, you can see the fibers in the neck. You, you know it's real, right? Um, but other than that, I think it's fantastic. I think uh, as a value proposition, uh, this guitar is really, really cool. So before we go, uh, this is what this guitar and the McPherson sound like back to back.
Does one sound better than the other? Yeah. I suck at recording acoustic guitars just with the limited equipment that I have. But here's what I will tell you after literally hanging them next to each other and playing them back to back over the last week or so that I've, well, I've had this guitar like four or five days maybe. And um, I've been playing it every day, uh, back to back with the other one. There is no comparison when playing them back to back. Whether I can convey that to you in this video or not, that's hard, but that has nothing to do with the guitars as much as it is to do with my lack of skills in recording them. So I'm just gonna tell you, this guitar does not sound as good as the McPherson, period. It is not as good as the McPherson, 100%. Uh, that being said, it is like a third of the price. So again, as a value proposition, it's kind of cool. Am I gonna keep this guitar? No, actually one of my friends is gonna, gonna end up with this guitar and I'm gonna keep my McPherson Sable because it is better. Um, but get in the Amazon link, buy one, tell me what you think for yourself. I think it's not a bad deal and I think it's a cool uh, attempt at it. I am not a fan of companies that rip off other companies. So that is a little, mm, to me, a little cringy, but uh, overall, I think it's cool. Uh, the action isn't as good. The You have to play around with the saddles and get the saddle. You have to set this thing up a little bit more probably to make it even a little bit better. Uh, but overall, it's all right. Anyway, I just wanted to give you my impressions of the Enya Carbon Fiber. What is the model number? E-A-X-4 Pro. You should try one. If you are not willing to spend the money for a proper McPherson over there, uh, then get one of these. If you want a proper McPherson, I'll leave a link to them. Tell them I told you to call and buy one because that guitar is definitely worth it as well. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you in the next video.